Hi lovelies, so today I am doing part two of the chronic illness tag. So if you're coming from part one, let me make sure I let you know that this is the same person. This is just what I look like without makeup and without doing my hair. So I'm still the same person, I promise you, but this is what I look like naked in the face. Just wanted to clear that up in case people were like, who the hell is this person? Why is she taking over part two? I think you guys really liked the first part and I'm so excited because Lori and I really just want to bring awareness and just spread the word and just get rid of the shame and fear and just go all out. So thanks to Kelly, uh, Patricia who did this tag and we just kind of took it on as, I don't even know if she did it as a tag, but we're just taking it on. So I will have Lori's information down below and the link to her video so that you can check that out because we're doing a collab on this so you can check out her answers to her illness and also I will have Kelly's down below for her videos part one and part two. So part two is the same amount of questions and I'm just going to continue on and I'm going to get on started because this was a long video last time. Number 12, what is the biggest injustice about living with a chronic illness? This was a hard one for me to kind of understand, but I think for me, the biggest injustice personally is the lack of awareness and this whole attitude of, well, if we can't see it, it's not real. And it's just kind of like blows my mind. It's just kind of irritating and I just feel like it's very much an injustice because we have to work so hard to like, believe me, and it's like, who else with like with my asthma I don't like people aren't like you don't have asthma like people are like oh okay you have an inhaler you have asthma I think that there's just a lack of awareness and lack of education and just teaching people about mental illness and chronic illness and all of those type things so for 13 what is the worst advice you have been given about your health I haven't done my diagnosis story. I will, I promise you, because it's, looking back, it's hilarious. It actually was uh, from my rheumatologist who diagnosed me. So my family and I are very like problem solving type people. And so we were like, what can we do? Like, what kind of treatment is there? What kind of medication? Or what can she do? And my doctor literally just kept repeating to me, walk around the block. Walk around the block walk around the block. Walk around the block. And when I'd be like, sir, um, my mother is 5'2", and I can barely walk from the chair that I was just in into the doctor's office, so I don't really want to like fall on the pavement and then like take my mom down with me, and he just would be like, walk around the block. It was awful. So that was the worst advice I got because at that point I was bedridden. So walking around the block was like the Olympics to me. Okay, so number 14, what items related to illness could you not cope without? I mean, the easiest answer would be like my medications, especially for my depression and my anxiety because that's kind of like life or death and with my pain medication. Um, I think that I probably, I don't know if I'd be able to tolerate all of that, but going in a different direction, that's just kind of like, I really want these things. I would say just my whole like setup, like my bed and my TV and things that keep me occupied and my dog especially, just like my iPad, my iPhone, FaceTime, being able to talk to my friends. When I'm in Florida, my life group FaceTimes me into groups so I can be like a part of that. And that's just a huge part of my life. So I wouldn't like not be able to deal with my illness, but I don't know, who knows, maybe not, especially with my anxiety and depression, might, got, might get to a point where I was suicidal, so a very real aspect of being chronically ill is dealing with hope, loss of hope. Like, number 15, can you remember being pain free? Uh, I actually can and I don't know if that's a blessing or a curse. I can definitely remember being pain free because I lived most of my life being pain free so I consider myself blessed because a lot of my friends that I've 
hooked up with and met have been sick for so much longer than me and into their ch childhood or longer. But emotionally, I cannot remember a time that I wasn't in pain. So as far back as being, well, as far back as you can remember, but I know as far back as being a baby, my mom knows that I was just really always uncomfortable and upset and just not in a great state of mind. I don't like to think about it because I so took it for granted. Like, I just want to go back and be like, you you wake up and you don't have pain. Like, like don't go out and drink and or, like do stupid things. Like, just like enjoy it and like actually be thankful that you can just do these simple things. Okay, number 16. Do you know anyone in real life who shares your condition? I was actually really surprised reading this and then thinking about it because I just immediately was like, yeah, of course I do. I have tons of sick friends. Sorry, I call you sick friends. But I actually don't know anyone in my real life that I know face to face that is actually diagnosed with fibro. And I was really surprised by that. Like, and then I was kind of sad because it would be so cool to actually be able to get together with someone and be like, oh man, this sucks and this is hurting today and this is hurting and like just know. But I have tons of people online and um, people I've met through YouTube that have fibro and so I, I, that is part of my real life so I count that as a blessing and that's been really freaking awesome. So. Um, it's not completely heartbreaking because I do have other people that I can talk to that a lot of people along the spectrum of chronic pain can relate to each other whether it's a different illness like Lori has with Addison's and she can relate to me with having fibro even though they're two completely different diseases so number 17 one symptom you would love not to have this is an easy one for me and it's an easy one for you if you've watched my channel for a really long time. Fatigue is my nemesis. I absolutely hate it. I will take pain over fatigue any freaking day. Fatigue drives me absolutely nuts. It's like an itch that you can't scratch. I can't sleep. I can't talk to people. I can't watch TV. I can't rest. I'm so uncomfortable, I try to eat, nothing satiates my fatigue and it drives me nutty and it really gets to me. But in just being so freaking exhausted and not being able to sleep, that's really frustrating and it's probably the only thing that gets me really crabby. That, that's my number one. I know that's really shocking because I think most other people would say pain that have fibro but, um, and I have really awful pain, I have a, the severe spectrum of pain, but I would take pain over fatigue because I just, I don't know, there's just something about it that I just, oh, I just wish it was a person, I could just punch it in the face. Sorry, I just got really graphic there. I caught myself. Whew. Number 18, nice things said to you and something negative said to you about being sick. The biggest number one nicest thing you can say to me is that you're praying for me. That's like my number one nicest comment that I get and that I'm just like, oh, thank you so much. And like you just saying thank you, I just feel like when I comment back to you guys isn't even enough because I just want to be able to like tell you how much that honestly means to me because it means the world to me. I've gotten... It's, I've gotten so many nice things that it was actually really hard to think of a negative thing that somebody said to me. I haven't gotten actually anything on YouTube, which was really shocking because that's actually why I put off doing this for such a long time. It's because I thought I would get negative remarks. But probably the one thing, and this is just kind of a coping mechanism of my dad, is that we use humor a lot, but he kind of takes it a little too far sometimes, and he says, oh, get over yourself. That's what he says. Like, I'll say, I'm like really in a lot of pain, and I've been throwing up, and my dad will be like, oh, get over yourself. And we laugh 
sometimes, but sometimes it feels dismissive and you just, I guess that would be a negative remark. But at the same time, people that are close to you will cope in different ways and my dad doesn't cope well with his little girl having something that he can't fix. So I think it's very hard for him to hear that I'm in distress and so he'll say things like that. Um, just to kind of like lighten the mood and not have to deal with it. But um, I'm very blessed and lucky in that way that I don't have, I, I, don't, I choose not to surround myself with negative people. So the people in my life right now are very, um, I just can't, I just can't say enough about them. They're just absolutely amazing. So um, if you become negative in my life, you're not going to be part of my life anymore and that was part of my recovery and um, my recovery from codependency is I just don't allow that in my life anymore so um, yeah so I, I, I actually am pretty lucky in that way but um, I think I don't even know if it's something negative said to you about being sick but I've never had someone directly say something like it's not real or you're faking it or something like that like that I've had other friends tell me that they've had that experience I haven't had that experience so but I also hid being ill for a really long time so that's probably part of it just guessing <laughs> 19 is your family supportive or ignorant to your suffering I would say half and half I have an extremely supportive family and on a day-to-day -day basis, my mom is my absolute best friend. She's the most amazing caregiver, and I can talk to her about anything that's going on with me or stressing me out or anything like that. And my dad's the same way if I'm really ill. And if it comes down to it where it's a really a crisis situation, for instance, when I was hospitalized two years ago, my family steps up. But there are people in my family that choose to not really know what I deal with or what fibro is or anything like that but again I'm not making excuses or anything but people cope in different ways and if I needed that from them I would ask that and I would be more pervasive about it in their lives but it's just not something I need. Number 20. Describe the feeling after walking up or down stairs. I would say terrifying. I actually am so lucky because my parents are retiring type age, so I live both of the houses that we have, the house that my parents have in Florida and the house here in North Carolina, we don't have stairs. They're one story because my parents are retired and they know that it's going to be hard for them to get up and down stairs, which works out perfectly for me. But in our old house, we had really steep stairs and I remember coming to them every single morning and just like my heart beating out of my chest to just get down to like get breakfast or something like that. And it was just, it always seemed like, I don't know what that Nickelodeon, um, what's that Nickelodeon show? In the comments down below, tell me that Nickelodeon show that where they like hidden temple or something. And they had to like go through this like obstacle course and like all this crazy stuff. That's what it, like it reminded me of because at the very bottom there was also a, a baby gate so that the dogs couldn't go upstairs. So it was terrifying but it was doable. I just had to do it slowly but yeah every time it was just like why? Um, now I don't have to deal with it so thinking about it, it's just like, bleh, bleh. Um, and now my friends are pretty good about helping me up and down stairs, and um, most doctor's offices and stuff have ramps, so I can just walk up those, which is a lot easier for me. Number 21, any natural supplements, powders, or alternative treatments you would recommend? I have like a few notes about this one because I do. Um, the biggest one that I can think of that I absolutely would recommend to every single person that has fibro, but do your research first, is a chiropractor. I, when I moved to North Carolina, found the most amazing chiropractor. I'd been to other chiropractors before and it was just not a good situation. 
they would set me into flares for like like month long flare like from one appointment with my doctor's office I'm, it was just awful but the doctor I have now he is on point he does his research he knows what fibro is he treats people with fibro he listens to me like if I'm like I'm really really afraid of you using we call it the thumper it's something that like just kind of like pounds a little bit like I really like was like I don't like this he does it just stopped using it and I was like okay and he would n use new interesting things on me like taping I just really cool things like that so he's just amazing and um, I saw him twice a week for I don't know over a year and he really 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 helped my body a lot I'm like a huge huge advocate for when you get diagnosed with something like this get everything else in your body on point like I got my asthma under control I got my chiropractor so that like my neck and back problems that I already had were getting fixed and my headaches and all that kind of stuff so um, that I could just deal with fibro which is like kind of a ridiculous state like just fibro but you know what I'm saying for me at least and I think that they're finding this for other people with fibro natural holistic type stuff actually works really well for me like melatonin works great for me I could take like 18 Ambien I never have I'm just like totally exaggerating there but I could take a bunch of Ambien and like I would be up all night but if I take like a couple of melatonin drink some sleepy time tea I would be much more relaxed and in a sleepy state than if I took any sort of narcotic or sleeping medication or anything like that. I'm also a big um, advocate for trying everything you can before you try something that could possibly be addictive or a narcotic. I think that it's worth a try. Just try it um, with your doctor's advice and talk to them about it and try things and they may not work and you'll have to use something that's a narcotic but I don't think you should you should jump right to that I think you should slowly ease into that and try other things before you get into that situation because once you get into that situation it's more complicated My favorite things are chamomile tea sleepy time tea and melatonin those three things are like I'll take that over any kind of hardcore medication or anything like that. I just, I love those things. If I'm upset, my stomach's upset, chamomile tea is just amazing. So, number 22, what is the biggest thing you would like people to know about your illness? <sighs> this is a huge question. I could do an entire video on this. My biggest thing, and this really irritates me, is that it's chronic there is no cure I'll see all these YouTube videos like cure for fibro and I'm like what research do you have behind that like what doctor have you been talking to because there is no cure yet when there's a cure you people will hear about it and then there won't be fibro anymore I want people to spread the word I want people to know that what fibro is I ha cannot tell you how many people don't know what it is. Um, I think people by now should know what fibro is just as much as they know what asthma is. It's so widespread and I think that people should talk about it and spread the word and ask. That's one huge thing that a lot of people that I really respect about people is if they don't know what fibro is and I say, oh, I have fibromyalgia. And they say, what is that? A lot of people shy away from that because they don't want people to be like, oh, I'm, I'm ignorant, I don't know what that is. No, if you don't know what it is, ask. That's really important. And um, let me explain what it is so that you can spread awareness. And the next person you do meet, um, you can say, oh, I know what that is. I know someone that has that. I'm really sorry. And so that question is always something that I take great care of answering. This is something that is has a range. That's a huge thing that people don't understand. There's mild fibromyalgia and there's severe fibromyalgia. Yeah, your aunts, uncles, sisters, brothers, cousins, husband may have fibro and they work full time, 
why don't you? Because I have severe, severe fibromyalgia. That, so that person probably has mild. That's another thing. And it's all understanding again. People, and I think it's huge that people with fibro need to research and they need to keep on top of things and they need to understand their illness so that when they are talking to people, they aren't ignorant as well because you can get in a state where you don't want to know what's going on with it and how bad it really is and I'm, I'm always gonna go back to not feeling great. It's not this big shocking thing where one day I'm feeling great and I'm hanging out and the next day I can't and you can't be surprised by that. That's just how it, how it works and you can't get your hopes up that like, oh maybe this time it's not gonna last and it's not. There's no cure. I hope one day there is going to be and I think the more awareness that we spread and the more compassion and understanding we have for one another, the more research is going to get done and there will be a cure and then that would be amazing. <laughs> That's all I can say about that is that would be freaking amazing. It has to start somewhere. Definitely check out part two of Lori's questions that she answered. I'm also going to link Jen's answers to part one. She did such a freaking awesome job. I tagged her and she did it and uh, she did such a, an amazing job and I really love her video. So, so go and check out Lori's video after this and then go check out Jen's part one. I would love for you guys to do this tag. If you do it, please leave a comment letting me know that you've done it and I will add you to the list of people to check out in the um, little down bar uh, because I would love to just keep on spreading this and keep tagging as many people as you can no matter what chronic illness it is, if it's migraines or headaches or I don't know, bunions, like just whatever it is, keep spreading it and well that sounds awful, don't keep spreading bunions, but keep spreading the word and um, awareness and I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, I hope that you're having a pain free stress free day, I'm sending out X double O's and as always I will talk to you guys tomorrow, bye!